A fossil hey from CFA, Ashbigail here, and welcome to our new series, 4-Minute Fossils. If you'd like to see more videos in this series, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that bell to make sure you turn on notifications for when we upload a new video. Today, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite fossil animals, the Colombian mammoth. We're starting this series with the Colombian mammoth for reasons that will become obvious shortly. This creature is incredibly important in the timeline of American paleontology. However, South Carolinians in particular have a special connection with the Colombian mammoth. How many of you watching today live in South Carolina? If you do, go ahead and drop a comment below with the city you're tuning in from. Our journey today takes us to the coast of South Carolina, when in 1725, slaves at Stono Plantation uncovered a set of teeth belonging to a Colombian mammoth. While the plantation owner was unable to identify the remains, the slaves knew right away that the teeth belonged to an elephant, a creature they were all too familiar with. In 1806, French biologist Georges Cuvier published an account of this discovery. In it, he described how these slaves comprehended the connection between mammoths and modern elephants long before European biologists. That makes these teeth from Mammothus columbi the first properly identified fossils in all of North America. Mammoths are some of the most recent relatives of today's modern elephants. With origins tracing back to the Paleocene over 56 million years ago, the elephant lineage is one of oddly shaped snouts, absurd tusks, small and large creatures, woolly bodies, and hairless bodies. In contrast to the widely known woolly mammoth, its Colombian relatives lacked the heavy fur coat, since temperatures along the southern Ice Age coast were on average only 17 Fahrenheit cooler in the summers and 32 Fahrenheit cooler in the winter. However, while these two creatures may not be wearing the same coat, open up their mouths and you'll see a similar set of chompers. Mammoths are grazers, meaning they feed on grasses and fibrous vegetation. A distinct contrast to the browsing mastodons chilling at the forest cafe. Mammoths developed a specialized set of teeth with multiple enamel plates to process the tough grass fibers. Shearing forces from their large powerful jaws broke up and ground down the grasses so their bodies were better able to process the plant matter. It's estimated that Colombian mammoths had to eat over 400 pounds of grass a day to sustain their large bodies. Speaking of large bodies, these creatures clocked in at a staggering 13 feet tall. That's shoulder height, folks. And a whopping 22,000 pounds. That's the equivalent to a dozen cows, 150 deer, or over 350 golden retrievers. Now that's a lot of games of fetch. Another prominent feature of our Ice Age pals were their large ivory tusks. Most tusks averaged 12 feet in length. However, the largest recorded was 16 feet long. But Mr. Ash, you're saying, wasn't this animal only 13 feet tall at shoulder height? How could mammoths carry around a set of tusks almost as tall as themselves? Not to worry, only 75% of the tusk protruded from the skull. These big beasties had to have a good bit secured into the bone to support such pearly whites. This, combined with large shoulder muscles, enabled the mammoths to carry around these fine features. Thanks again for tuning in to the first episode of 4 Minute Fossils. Stay tuned next time for when we take a look at another one of the Ice Age megafauna. These creatures might be called slods, but don't let that fool you. They moved quite a bit faster than today's tree species. A fossil farewell, my fine fans. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell to enable notifications.